Alrighty, folks, everybody should see my screen. Alrighty, today uh, this session is recorded, which means uh, we can use this as a little follow-up and uh, additional learning ammo. Now, what I want to accomplish today, uh, as the title of today's webinar uh, suggests, is managing products in Inksoft. And we're going to share some tips and tricks and just general knowledge as it relates to products. And then we'll, of course, take your questions. So to begin, product management in Inksoft, we're going to go ahead and log in from the top left. Now this is a function that's always going to improve and enhance. And we just uh, got off the phone with Tom Lawson, the VP of Sales at Sanmar, and uh, fighting for some new ways to create better integration. And uh, the good news is they're, they're going to have their team uh, continue to make modifications and enhancements to get even tighter integration. Uh, so what I'm going to do at this stage <clears throat> is now click on Config. And we're going to focus on one portion of Inksoft uh, in today's training event. We're going to focus on product. So as we go to the global settings here, uh, many of you, uh, by the way, may have noticed uh, logging in this morning that there's sort of a new, uh, under the control panel, you can now visit your core pages in Inksoft and jump immediately to those here in the very top right. Again, another example of some constant enhancements and improvements that we try to integrate in Inksoft just to improve the experience. Okay, under global settings, here we are with products. And under the product drop-down menu, we have a number of options. And what we're going to do, and this is kind of my preference and workflow uh, when managing products, but I like to start with product categories. And this is particularly true if I'm going to enter in a brand new product into Inksoft. So what I'll do at this stage is I can click on Categories. And this is going to show me all of the current categories that are in the system. Now I have some management tools in this particular space. What I can do, as the red X implies next to these products, is I have the ability to delete. So if you ever find that there's a product category or product that you want to eliminate, you have the ability to do that uh, by using the little red X function. So you can make the decision, you know what, I'm never going to sell X product. Well, you have the ability to delete that entire category of product. So you'll notice the very first option that displays is the actual category. Next to it, that displays with the red X's, these are the subcategories, the actual you know, warehouse of, of your, your categories. So you'll notice if I click on the actual button for aprons, we have the ability to view the apron products. So if I click OK, that's going to drive me to the product admin tool that's going to display those specific products within that category. So uh, again, you can measure and gauge what products are available in that specific category by selecting it. So let's go back here. Don't want to get too far ahead of myself since we're talking about managing product categories. Now you'll also notice there's a little tool icon. And if I click on that icon, this is the ability for me to change the what we call cover flow or the image that represents these different product categories and subcategories. So if you want to represent accessories with a different image rather than the one that you see here, you have the opportunity to change these product images. In fact, let's change accessories now. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up a document in either CorelDRAW, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, whatever your, pref you know, your preference is in terms of design software. And what we want to do is we want to create a square document. So no matter what I'm doing, when I'm working in Inksoft, I, the rule of thumb is everything is in a square. Product category you know, representations, the actual product, Everything needs to be in a square sort of orientation because that's what Inksoft uses. So in this case, I'm going to create a product preview. And what I like to do, I like to use a 500 by 500 image. So it gives me enough high quality resolution to look good. So 500 by 500 pixel workspace. And you can see as soon as I click apply, here I'm in Adobe Illustrator, I have a 500 by 500 workspace. So in this instance, I could type out accessories or I could type out whatever it may be. And what I can do is now save that. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in here. We don't want to waste time. So I could type out, you know, aprons or banners or whatever it may be. What I want to do is go File, Save for Web and Device. And we want to save this. And we want to save this as a JPEG. So I'll go ahead and say this is a JPEG. And now I can go ahead and save that for web. So we've just created a, a, a product preview for that particular product category. I'm not going to actually change that now. So let's just leave this the same. But what I would do is I would browse for this image by clicking Browse. So when I make that selection, I can of course go and grab the image that I want, and it's automatically going to replace this particular product category. So if you're not satisfied with the product category or subcategory or even product images, 
that are being used, you have the ability to replace those in Inksoft. So let's go back here now to our categories. So again, we've talked about the ability to edit a category to see the products that are actually warehoused. We can change the product image that's representing these categories. We can also delete entirely a product category. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to the very bottom where we have the ability to add a new category. So what I'm gonna do now from the drop down menu is I can either create a brand new product category or I can create a subcategory. So what I'm gonna do now at the very top, notice how it says root. So creating a root category is kind of like creating a master category. So if I wanna integrate a new category into Inksoft, what I'm gonna do now is make the root uh, selected and here I can go ahead and choose or enter in the name of a category. So let's say that we wanna integrate um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, uh, organic, uh, let's put in hemp, right? Hemp t-shirts or bamboo or whatever the heck it's gonna be. If I wanna create a dedicated product category that's gonna be called organics, you know, I have the ability to go ahead and type in that data here and I can go ahead and hit the plus symbol. And once I do that, we're gonna get a quick page refresh and we've just added a brand new product category. And so if I scroll up, you'll notice that this is gonna be alphabetized here. So if we scroll up, you'll see that we have the ability, uh, we added, or, oh, I think I made a duplicate. We already had organics. So let's see if it added it here as a duplicate category. I don't believe it would. So let's go add a new category because we already have organics, so shame on me. So let's scroll down here to the bottom. I'm gonna create a new category and I'm gonna name this, um, I don't know why I'm not thinking, let's name this hemp. And we'll go ahead and add a new root category. So let's say hemp is the product category. Now underneath hemp, I'm going to have subcategories, right? So let's go back up here and make sure hemp properly uh, was implemented into our preview here. And here you can see we have a new category called hemp. Now what we can do is we can create subcategories into that. So if we wanna have hemp apparel or hemp uh, you know, bags, whatever it would be appropriate, I can go ahead and now choose a category, the, root, the core category. Think of this as like a parent-child relationship. So in this dropdown, I'm gonna select hemp and I'm gonna add hemp bags into that product category. So again, we're gonna create parent categories or core categories and then subcategories of products. Now the reason I advise doing this before we integrate a new product into Inksoft is that that product category and subcategory is already gonna be available. So in the dropdowns, when I need to choose to add a product to a specific category, it has to be associated with a category, it's already created in the system. Now you'll notice here we have hemp, which is again, the parent category. We've just added hemp bags as a subcategory. I can now add a decorative uh, element. So let's actually go back and create that because I hate leaving things undone. So we're gonna go to new and we're gonna create a 500 by 500 workspace here. Maybe we could grab a hemp leaf, right? So we'll put in hemp. And again, I'm gonna go and uh, you know, decorate this, choose the size, the, the details, the dimensions. You know, I, ideally when you're creating these product images, you're gonna to wanna to keep a theme the same. So anytime I create something, I'm generally gonna save it as a template because there's nothing worse than having a bunch of you know, product category images and every one of them is mismatched. And you'll come to, to realize that later and you'll probably hate it. So what I recommend doing is creating one sort of template and saving that and reusing it. So I could then use the same one come right back to it and change this to hemp bags and change the position and the pricing, or the, the position and the sizing of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and go file, save for web and device. Again, we're gonna save this as a PN, or excuse me, a JPEG. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my desktop now. We'll name this hemp uh, so we can find this easily. And we're gonna go right back into Inksoft. And now I'm gonna add a product uh, category image to represent that. So we're gonna browse go to the desktop and here I can select hemp. We're gonna do a quick refresh. You can see that's uploading now. And that image will now be uh, a representation of this new category. So maybe we'll put a, a hemp leaf in the background, make it decorative, make it pretty. Um, we're good to go. So let's go back here and refresh this page and you'll see that uh, reflected now in our core page. So we'll go and scroll down. You can see now we have a 500 by 500 a pixel image representing that area. Again, the reminder is everything is square. So if we go back to our fake uh, website here, everything in Inksoft is square. So if I click on clip art, and if I click on an image, all of these containers that represent these images are gonna be square. 
It's the same of products. Every product thumbnail, every product image is square. Even these core categories here, as you can see. So make sure everything you do is in square. It's always the rule of thumb. Okay, great. So we've talked about categories. That's pretty much everything you need to know about a product category. So now we're going to go back to global settings and to products. Now we can do much of the same for manufacturers and suppliers. So if I click on manufacturers, I have the ability to see all of the manufacturers that are in the system. And of course you can see uh, the product manufacturers that actually have a logo associated with it. And then you can see the ones that just have text associated. So if you create a new manufacturer and you don't add a custom image to represent that uh, manufacturer, then it's going to just have the text. So you typically you're going to, again, create a 500 by 500 workspace. You'll lay out the manufacturer logo like American Apparel or, you know, whatever it may be, uh, Relic Apparel. And uh, you can format that in the thumbnail that's going to represent these manufacturers. Now, of course, I can go to the bottom. I can add a new manufacturer. So we can go ahead and type in a manufacturer. So we'll put in Relic Apparel. I can go ahead and add that by clicking the plus symbol. And we've, we, we have just introduced a brand new manufacturer. So do the, do the assessment when you're entering a new product into the system. Do you already have the supplier manufacturer in? You know, if it's, you know, Broder and Samar, uh, maybe it's, you're just integrating a new t-shirt, whatever it may be. Um, so if it's a brand new custom crazy product, then I'm probably going to want to enter a product category first and then enter the manufacturer. And if there's a supplier, I may even want to, uh, you know, implement a new supplier. So you can see here back to global settings. Here's our suppliers. Again, I can delete a supplier. I can see how many products are associated with that supplier. And I can also uh, click on the little uh, wrench icon to add a, uh, a logo to represent that supplier. And I can even put in a product availability message. So if you know that you drop ship product from a specific manufacturer or ships uh, typically, you know, prints on demand, ships 10 to, to seven days, you can add an, an availability message uh, in this particular area here. Now there's also, as you know, there's probably at least two ways to do everything in Inksoft. So there's another area where we can put in a default availability message or we can put in one for a specific product. So again, adding a new category, a new manufacturer, and a new supplier. That's a really good investment and a good workflow if I'm introducing a brand new custom product from scratch. First create a category, then consider if I need to introduce a new manufacturing supplier. Oftentimes what I recommend is make yourself the manufacturer. You know, there's no reason to promote a company that your shoppers aren't going to know. So if you're selling mouse pads and mugs and koozies and you know, some of these decorated products, you know, if it doesn't have any, you know, sort of um, prestige associated with it, then why give, you know, value to Anvil or, you know, another organization? So oftentimes I recommend making yourself the supplier and the manufacturer. Why not? It's another excuse to show your logo, your identity. Your clients might think that you're an apparel manufacturer for all you know. Uh, so again, nice little tip and trick there. All right, going back to the products drop down menu, we've talked about three of these functions. We're going to focus on uh, the product admin tool and the new product tool. So first, we're going to go to product admin. And this is a really good dashboard to make a lot of decisions. So as soon as we get to this dashboard here, you can see all of the most recent products I've implemented into Inksoft. So it's sort of a chronological sort of assessment of all the uh, all of the new products that you've introduced into the system. So the very last product I introduced was from our last web training event, uh, which is uh, an iPad case. So I can see sort of a chronological assessment of the new products I've entered. Here we can see a, a um, I believe this is a alphabetized assessment of uh, categories. So I can see that now in uh, the top here. Now, uh, some new things. You can now keyword search for a product. I can now list all of the products. So this has been a, an enhancement that's come recently. Uh, again, this is kind of a shortcut to some of the functions that we've just shown. I can now set up a custom category by clicking the, the icon here. I can set up a supplier manufacturer. I can actually click on one of these manufacturers and go right to their product, all the products warehoused in their specific, uh, you know, in that specific category or supplier. Now you'll see at their bottom, I mentioned that you have the ability to create a, um, a custom product availability message. So if you want to create a global availability message that says products printed on demand, and you're going to have that message available on every product by default, 
this is the area that you're gonna do that. Now you can override on specific products. Let's say that you're, you're always gonna stock white mugs. You're always gonna stock, um, you know, mouse pads. So you could put, you know, ships immediately, you know, in stock now. So you can customize the availability message. It's uh, again, a matter of your preference. It's entirely up to you. All right, so let's focus on these main tools here at the very top left under products. Of course, I can click on one of these product thumbnails or category thumbnails. It's gonna take me right to that particular click. I can search products. What the, probably the, the number one most used feature here is gonna be list all products. Now when I do that, this, this is gonna show me all of my products that are in the system and this is gonna be all available products and all inactive products. So truly, this is every product that's warehoused in your Inksoft database. Now, this takes some time here. I'm loading, uh, I think, over 180 something images. So give it a second to populate. Now, one of my favorite things at the very top is we have the ability to filter by. So if I wanna focus in on a specific store and see what Acme Apparel Company is selling, um, I can do that. These filters are a really excellent way for you to see how you're merchandising products. So again, I can uh, filter by manufacturer, by supplier, by store, by product category, and I can also filter by other, by the items that are printable versus the items that are, that are static. So remember, a core, you know, a good portion of your design, or your products are gonna be pr imprintable products, products that can be customized and decorated. However, some of the function in Inksoft, and this also relates to, uh, to products, is the ability to sell pre-decorated items that can't be edited. So here I can see what items do I have in my system that are static. So when I click on one of these from the dropdown, it's automatically gonna go and showcase all of the products that I'm offering that are static. So these are, um, again, static designs. These can't be customized by the end user. So what I could do, again, using this function, is I can say, you know what? We're never gonna sell some of these products. So you can go through and choose products that you're not gonna offer and you have the ability to delete. I've been meaning to delete this one for a long time, this Bears design. So I can go through here, choose the products that I wanna delete or manage, and I have the ability now to click some of these major controls here at the bottom. So batch controls, if you have two or more items selected, you could batch control these, which means I can change the pricing, I can make these products active versus inactive, I could feature versus de-feature products. I can add to a store. So I just selected two items. Maybe I wanna add those to Texas Combat Sports. So I can select the store and I can add it to the store. In contrast, I can also remove, product, remove products from stores automatically. So uh, I can also filter a product or say, you know what, this product I wanna cross promote in a different category. So Inksoft in the dashboard, it tells you and showcases some of the most popular selling products. Maybe you wanna take those popular items and you wanna showcase those in different categories. Uh, vice versa, maybe you wanna take products that you think are really valuable and cool and you wanna showcase those in complementary uh, product categories. You have the controls to select products and choose unique product categories. So powerful controls here, click of the mouse uh, to let you uh, control massive amounts of products. Here, we're gonna go ahead and permanently delete. Now, you're gonna get this message, are you sure you wanna permanently delete? Because again, this is irreversible. So I wanna nuke those two static products. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and those will now be removed from uh, my Inksoft web presence. So click of the mouse, those are now deleted and nuked. So these filter controls are really, really important, and we definitely recommend you experiment with these, play around, click around, um, so you'll really start to understand the value of these tools. All right, so now that we're in our main area here where we're listing all of the products that we're selling, again, we've talked about these filters up at the top. So what I wanna point out is I have the ability at the very, very top to select SKU. And when I do that, it's gonna select every single item that I'm currently offering. And these are still static products. So let's actually go back to uh, filter by. So that's gonna take us right back to the main environment here where we have 185 or 188 products. So what I can do is I can select every single product in a category um, with the filter controls. And if I go down to the bottom now, I have again those batch controls. Now one of the most common batch controls that you're gonna use is the ability to control your product pricing. Pricing grid. What this allows you to do is go and select a range, whether it be all or whether it be a select range of product. And these batch uh, pricing grid is gonna allow you to go and dynamically change the pricing for these products. 
Now we understand this is tedious, this isn't pleasant. We, we have invented a new tool that we will release soon that's gonna allow you to just do a markup from case pricing. So in part of the conversation we had today with the folks at Samar was automatically reflecting case pricing uh, in, in the feed that they give us. Additionally, that's gonna mean that all Inksoft users are gonna be getting tier one case pricing from Samar. So hopefully that means that you're gonna be saving money on your inventory from Samar. So if all of the case pricing is in Samar and you can say, you know what, I wanna do a X percent markup and it will price all of your products for you automatically. So that's coming very soon. For now, uh, until further notice, uh, you're gonna use the pricing grid to go in and effectively choose a default pricing. Now a default pricing is gonna carry pricing over to all of your product, all, the, all of the variations. So you can see here at the very top, crew neck sweatshirt, $26 no matter what color you choose. Or I can say, you know what, for dark garments, I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna charge a dollar more for every dark garment simply because I have to generate a flash uh, or an underbase rather. Uh, maybe I'm printing direct to garment. I have to print a, a white underbase and, and my print cost goes up. So I wanna compensate that by having a different price point for these unique SKUs. Now anytime that you know, Inksoft thinks that there's something fishy, you're gonna see that in red. So you can see here that it shows, well, hey, your default pricing is X, but all these other product pricings are you know, you know, unique. So you wanna take care of that and go in here and make those modifications and um, have those update in real time. So I'm gonna go through and delete all of this individual pricing because I don't want these overrides. I wanna have every one of these 100% cotton t-shirts be $10.49. So I can go and make those changes and I'll go down the very bottom and I'm gonna go ahead and save those particular changes. So again, this is a way for you to go and control your product pricing in sort of one swoop. Go ahead and save those changes and that's gonna be reflected in real time. You're gonna get a message saying successfully saved product prices. So it's much better than obviously clicking on each individual product and making those changes, but we're really excited about the new enhancement with up, uploading, uh, excuse me, changing your product pricing uh, from case pricing, so pretty exciting. So again, your batch controls will let you do your pricing grid. You could make certain products uh, uh, active versus inactive. And let me define what that means. Let's go to the very top here. So notice as I'm scanning through here, you'll see in green, featured. So on my Inksoft homepage, um, on the very, very front homepage, I can feature both products and designs. And I think that this is really important. So you might want to attract people by really cool graphics and really cool products. Now these randomly rotate, so take a quick mental snapshot of these images that you see here. And I'm pointing to designs and also products. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page. Notice what happens. Those are dynamically going to rotate and shuffle. So you could have a thousand featured products um, they're just gonna randomly rotate. So be very aware of products that you want to showcase and promote. Now when we're in this environment, you'll see featured design, or featured product rather. Now remember, I have the ability, excuse me, I didn't mean to click that up, let's go back in time here. I can uh, filter all of my products by status. Um, so we can go and see what products are active, what products are inactive. Um, we also can do it by category. Um, but here you may want to go look at the products that are currently featured. And again, we can change that by batch. And then I can add products that I want to showcase and feature. So my recommendation is go and do an assessment of your top selling products, maybe unique products that you imprint that nobody else in your area does. And I think that's a really great way for you to get um, you know, a lot of attention from your homepage. So again, we can see our marked or featured products. I can go and cherry pick and select products that I want to feature and use the batch controls at the bottom to uh, make those showcased. So let's go actually, let's go choose a few new products to, uh, to showcase here on the homepage. So let's go and choose, I'm not a good judge of what products are cool. So let's, uh, let's feature a dog tag, a, a sublimatable dog tag. Let's also showcase and feature, let's go grab one more product. Let's do a youth 100% t-shirt. So again, I can scroll down the bottom and here I have the ability now to select mark as featured. And that's gonna make those two products now a candidate to show on the homepage randomly. So we'll let that go ahead and finish updating. So you're gonna spend a, a, sh a good amount of time managing your products using this environment, listing all of your products, filtering products to then very target, or to target and then really control those specific range of products. 
and then the batch controls are critical. So um, I think this is pretty commonsensical. I'll, of course, take your questions at the end of this process. So again, batch controls, super, super, super important. If you haven't used these yet, make sure to roll up your sleeves and get in here and use the batch controls. Alrighty, what I'm sure everybody wants to see is the tools to add a new product into the system. So what I'm going to do now is go to Global Settings. I'm going to go to Products, or of course here in this environment, I can click New Product. So when I make that designation, we have the ability to create a new product using several methods. So on the very left, create a new product. You can see at the very bottom there's a description. You're going to want to read these. This allows you to upload new garment into the system, and it should say product because it really is any product, and assign a product name, price, colors, descriptions, features, etc. Creating a static product. This is a really powerful tool. Again, this is going to allow you to add artwork to a product that's already in the system, and then you could make it uneditable. So if you're setting up a new web store for a customer, or maybe a high school, it's probably going to be pretty important that you furnish you know, a few pre-decorated items because after all, there's two types of shoppers. The shopper that just wants to buy a cool hoodie. They're not creative. They don't want to invest the time being creative. They don't want to use the design capabilities. They just want to add a cool product to the cart and check out. Now, in contrast, there are the people that want to personalize. They want to design something. So I think it's really important that you design a web store that has both static or uneditable designs that can be added to cart, and then, of course, the power of personalization. We can also add a new product from the SAMR catalog as we uh, clicked on here. So if I click Add Product from SAMR Catalog, if you have a SAMR Catalog, you could enter in the SKU or just click OK. Uh, leave it blank and that's going to let you browse all of the products uh, that are available in the SAMR Catalog. There's some pretty exciting integrations. Again, more integrations coming soon. You know, we are limited to the technology that uh, SAMR provides. So unfortunately at present, you know, if a, if a product goes uh, you know, is, is made um, sort of deactive or is removed from their offering. We currently can't, uh, you know, tell that uh, until, you know, we get a feed the next day. Um, but there's some really cool integration that's going to be, again, coming to this product very soon. So in the SAMR catalog, we can click on a category or a, a manufacturer, and then we can go and choose the appropriate product. So I can see, okay, district threads, vintage, uh, French Terry crew neck sweatshirt. I can click, click on that, and I have the ability to now copy that product to the store. And that's going to give you the ability to then uh, add an imprintable area to this product. And I want to make that very clear. When I add this to the store, we still have to do some edits. And the number one edit is you have to define imprint regions for these products. So there is no standard sort of imprint region. You might want to add this, but you might only decorate the left chest. So we don't know that information. So there is a few edits and tweaks that you're going to have to make after you add a, or copy a product to the store. So pretty important to recognize. All right, so let's go back out of this environment here. Lastly, if you happen to have uh, maybe deleted something, um, you can go back and actually add product from the Inksoft catalog. So these are all the products that Inksoft has uploaded and defined imprint regions from. So you have the ability, and as we add more content and con content in here, you'll have the ability to, uh, to go and reach out to this catalog. So again, three ways to, uh, four ways rather, to, to consider a new product in uh, integrating that into Inksoft. For now, we're going to talk about creating a custom product or a new product. So if I select create a new product from scratch, again, if you recall, we've already entered in a custom category and we've entered in a custom manufacturer and supplier because I know that I'm going to in integrate stress squeeze balls, you know, that can be pad printed or whatever it may be. So in the system, knowing that I've already implemented a supplier manufacturer, the first step, the very first function that you're going to do when entering a new product is you're going to choose what supplier uh, is going to be available. So here I'm just going to go ahead and choose Nike or Colder, doesn't matter. Manufacturer, again, we're going to choose a manufacturer from the drop down and we're just going to make, um, we'll make, uh, how about uh, Inksoft as the manufacturer? Now we can give this a name. What's the name for this product? This is going to be a um, stress squeeze ball. So type in the data here. And again, um, you'll notice everything that's required is going to have a red asterisk. So pretty much every field is going to be required. So here for SKU, we can type in a SKU. If you don't know what a SKU is, there's a link to Wikipedia where you can read all about a, a stock keeping unit. 
Um, but for a skew, you want to be aware. Don't use crazy characters. Don't put spaces between characters. Um, what you want to do is just put a skew. And skews are intended to be short and descriptive. So I might put in stress, squeeze ball, um, you know, 12. So you can have a skew that represents the uh, manufacturer versus a skew that you're going to use for your accounting purposes. So let's say that you have accounting systems and you're going to recognize this part number equals this product. However, your manufacturer that actually is going to do the imprint or the production, maybe they use something, uh, you know, stress squeeze ball 32101. Um, you know, you can enter in two different SKUs, one for yourself and one for the manufacturer. Because as I go to fulfill this order, I want to make sure that my manufacturer knows what product, what part is in question. Weight, this is very critical. And I'd recommend, you know, this isn't the weight of the product. This is the weight of one product plus its average handling and shipping. So I don't know about you, but most companies pay, you know, they have people that work in their warehouse that, you know, cover handling and shipping and, and shipping merchandise, and that's not free. So most people will build in their overhead as it relates to shipping and uh, handling into this. So if I know a stress squeeze ball weighs 12 ounces, but I know that, you know, I want to buffer that to 18 ounces just to compensate for extra handling, um, that's, that's where I'm going to consider that. Now, customer price. This is the price that uh, for a blank stress ball. Again, there's a description here. This price should not include printing. So this is the product price. Think of it this way. If you were going to sell a blank stress ball to somebody, uh, what would you sell it to them for? You know, you know your cost, maybe 99 cents per stress squeeze ball. You know your average markup is X. So let's say that it's a $4 blank stress squeeze ball. Uh, your cost. So if I know, again, 99 cents or a dollar per stress squeeze ball, I'm going to enter that data here. Now, very, very important, pricing models. Print price models. I don't have more than one selected, so the drop is not available. What you can do with a product is you can associate it to a print price schedule. So if this is going to be a product that's going to be screen printed, or you've created a custom printing uh, method, you can access that and associate that to the product. Now, you can also make this disassociated from print pricing. You can say, you know what, this is going to be a $4 stress squeeze ball. I don't care how in the heck somebody decorates this. It's going to be 4 bucks per item. So you can see there's options here. So if I click on options, I have the ability to disassociate printing from this. And that option is here under printing. I can select free. Now free means no charge to customer for the actual printing. So it's going to be a $4 product no matter how they decorate it. That's it. Now in this option window, one of the important factors is team names and numbers. It's probably not going to be appropriate to let people decorate their team roster on the back of a stress squeeze ball. So I'm going to disassociate that and tell Linksoft, do not allow team names and numbers uh, from being added to this particular product. So make sure to go through the, the options, read the description. You know, static, do not allow any designs to be applied on this product. So if I just want to sell blank, stress squeeze balls that cannot be decorated, I would select static. So a lot of controls here in terms of merchandising. So make sure to, uh, to go through these and consider these effectively. Now, the, when the embroidery module comes, you'll see that there's an option for embroidery, allow embroidery designs. Um, you know, again, this has been integrated in because embroidery is coming uh, fairly soon. Again, you can disallow a charge from being added uh, in, in terms of embroidery. You could enable the, the ability to print on sleeves. If this product has sleeves, we could enable the ability for print pricing and sleeves to be active. We could feature the product in this window. We could mark a product out of stock, discontinued, and of course, active is very important. Active means it's currently available for sale. So if you create a product, you want to make it active, meaning if you want to have it available for sale, it has to be active. Otherwise, you could have a ton of products that are in the system. They're just not publicly available. So you need to go through each one of these little menus here in these functions. Pricing, dial in your pricing. You can choose a pricing model. Um, so again, consider what product it is. You can create your own custom pricing models. Now what I want to do is I'm actually going to go back here and show you these pricing models because I want everybody to understand this because it's a really powerful function. When you go to printing and you set up your print pricing, you can set up a default print pricing for screen printing and digital print pricing. However, for each of these categories, you can create a new price grid. 
So if I wanna create a new pricing grid for digital print for signs, I have the ability to enter that data in here. You know, I'm gonna give a name for my new price schedule. So let's put in signs. And I'm gonna say create new pricing grid. And I'm gonna go dial in the pricing for that grid. So what I'm gonna do now is go and dial in. I'm gonna keep these defaults. So I'm gonna say, all right, five, 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 and five. Create this new pricing level. All right, great. I've created a custom pricing schedule. Um, so what I'm gonna do at this stage is now go back. Well, I can't refresh this page. But now I have an additional custom pricing model and that would reflect here in this option. I would have the ability to make that selection. So top to bottom, left to right, fill in all the data, go to pricing, consider what options are gonna be relevant. Product description. This is a great way to take advantage of SEO. So this is gonna be active text. All of the products that display in Inksoft have a product description and it's actual text. So if we go back and we look at the uh, source code for these products, you would see, or the search engines rather, would actually see this product description here that displays. So this is a great place to embed key phrases. Design your own custom t-shirt online, you know, and then just describe the product. So again, product description, I can put in a custom availability message in stock and I could put in you know, 1,200 units, whatever it may be. Um, so once, again, I can go through these tabs. International, um, you know, this is gonna be for customs. So if you decide to ship to Canada or the Virgin Islands and customs intervenes with the package, you, know, you could put in the country of origin. Um, harmonized system code. This is kind of an advanced function. You don't have to do this if you're only selling into the States. Um, but effectively, I can click on available codes this is gonna to go to the World Custom Organization you know, tool where you could go and effectively keyword search and grab um, a specific code that represents a category of products. So here, if I'm shipping live animals, if I'm selling livestock out of my uh, custom store, I can go grab a pure breed breeding animal code. I can copy and paste that right into this particular ha harmonized code. So effectively, Customs is gonna know what product this is, how it's oriented, et cetera. Um, feeds, again, um, third-party feeds. So uh, we have some exciting new function. I'm not gonna get into this now because a lot of the function is not available, um, but this is coming soon. So effectively, if you're feeding products to Google or Amazon, um, which Google makes available, you could give it very explicit you know, uh, codes and, and categories. Uh, so pretty important, but again, advanced, not necessary, not critical. All right, once I've dialed in all of the critical information, what I'm gonna do is click Next and it's gonna say, please enter a product description. Well, I didn't do that, shame on me, it's required, so I'm gonna put in description. I'm just gonna type in blah. So now I can click next. If I've done everything appropriate, it goes to the next window. We're now in stage two. So what sizes does this stress squeeze ball come in? It comes in one size only, so I'm gonna put one size. However, if this comes in extra, or extra small, small, medium, large, XL, etc., I'm gonna choose by selecting those particular sizes, and then I can put in up charges. I can say, if you order an extra large, I'm gonna charge you $5 more. If you order a double XL, I'm gonna charge you $10 in addition to the product pricing, so it's an up charge. Now, of course, I can add my custom um, sizes below. Uh, now, here is where we're gonna dial in the uh, styles and variations. So we're gonna say, this only has one size. Let's go and back this out. We're just gonna put a one size stress squeeze ball and what I'm gonna do at this stage is give this a name. This is a white stress squeeze ball. What is the color? And this is for the thumbnail that displays with the product. So clicking in this area, you see I can draw and pinpoint a specific color. So this is gonna be white. Now you can have a secondary color. So let's say I have a t-shirt that has red sleeves but it has a white you know, core sort of um, you know, body. I can go and dial that in uh, with primary and secondary color. I'm just gonna leave the secondary uh, because it's not required. All right, at this stage, I can click new product. Please note anytime you can go back in time by clicking the back button from the bottom left. Create new product. This typically takes a few seconds um, simply because you know it's creating indexing in a database and entering in all sorts of you know, crazy nerdy stuff. Successfully created new product, hooray. So we've done a bulk majority of the work. Now there's a few more functions to this process. Now once you do this once or twice, it flows 
uh, and it's a fairly quick process. I can typically upload a custom product in about a minute. All right, now, what stores and what categories is this design or is this new product going to go in? So I can say, I want this to be merchandised in every one of my stores, or I only want it in my fulfillment store and Dante Pizzeria and Mascot Gear. Then I can say, what product category should this belong to? Now, if you remember, I liked to create this product category in advance of this process. So it's already here, it's already dialed in, I don't have to think about it. But I can also create a new category here in this particular environment. It's just my preference, my process, uh, you know, that's my workflow. So here I can say, all right, I need to create a new category for stress squeeze ball. So I could enter in um, stress balls. Enter that data here, click the plus symbol. That's a new product category. Now you always have to select a product category that's a requirement in this process. Uh, otherwise, Inksoft won't know where to sell this product. Um, so it will be invisible until you assign it to a category. So I'm going to go and click on stress balls. So I have stores selected. I have products selected. So what we're going to do now is click next. Next comes the imprintable area option. Um, however, what we're going to do at this stage, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead of myself. That's the next region. What we want to do is that we now have to have a product image. And here you can, it describes 500 by 500. So think of it this way. You need to have a 500 by 500 square, and then you need to orient your product within that square. So this is where I get to go and Google a product, stress ball. And hopefully this doesn't give me anything crude. All right, so stress squeeze ball. Let's see if we can't find a white one. I like to use Google Images because I can filter by color and by size. So I only want to see white stress squeeze balls. I can say I only want to see medium in terms of size, and it's going to display those now in the preview. So I like to rip off um, you know, product images that are already decorated and created. Sometimes, like for cryptic things, you know, it's kind of hard to, to find. Um, but here's one. You know, this is gray. It's not white. But um, actually, here's one. Oh, that's a golf ball, it looks like. Here's a brain. Um, so we'll continue to filter through this and see if we can't find something appropriate. Uh, let's see here. I'm striking out. Of course, I choose a cryptic product for this example. Um, let's choose this guy up here. This one's going to be functional enough. You can also use some of the tools in Photoshop to go and sort of uh, replace some of the uh, colors that are in here. But I think, um, I think this one's going to work good. This is a decent size element here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to full size image. And what I could do at this stage is I like to actually use screenshot software. It saves you a step. So what I like to do, I use on a Mac, I use a, a product called Little Snapper. And this is a screenshot software. So I know my shortcut. And what I'm going to do now, I have too many of these. Um, it's free, but you can only warehouse so many designs here. So let me go and delete a design that I don't need. So now just freed up one. So what I'm going to do now is use my shortcut. And I guess I didn't recognize that. Let's go back here and delete a few more of these guys. I don't need these. Uh, if you're on a PC, the, the screenshot software I like to recommend is called Jing. And that's J-I-N-G. So what I'm going to do now is go and grab a uh, you know, product shot of this and um, go and narrow this guy down. All right, cool. Just grab Snap, and that just took a screenshot of that particular product. What I could do at this stage is now bring this into you know, Photoshop or Illustrator. And just make sure that it's going to be you know, a 500 by 500 or it's going to be a perfectly square um, product uh, image. This is really an important process here. Now, if it's skewed, if it's a rectangle, the image is going to get distorted. It's going to look silly. So make sure to size this properly. This is going to be the image that actually displays in the Inksoft Design Studio. So what we're going to do now is here we have this square image. I actually did a pretty good job making this square. Um, but what I'm going to do now is go and change my canvas size. So let's go to image, canvas size, and I'm going to make that in pixels. We're going to do this 500 by 500. So you can kind of do this by eye. I mean, I think that the image that I grabbed is pretty good in terms of being square. But I, you know, this is a one-time time investment, so I'm going to make sure it's right. So I'm going to make sure that, that the resolution is decent enough. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the uh, image size. And I'm going to use Photoshop to do this so it actually enhances the image quality. So right now, um, pixel dimension, you can see what it's displayed now. So I'm going to boost that up maybe to 1500, and I'm going to change the resolution to 150. So as I change the size of this, I'm actually going to boost the image quality of the resolution. So I've just made that particular change. 
I'm satisfied with the way this looks. And now I can even you know, change the size of this a little bit more. And now I'm just gonna color my background white. So I'm going through this pretty fast here, but let's go and decorate our background and make that white. And I'm gonna go change this color. And again, you'll get really good at this. Uh, I suppose a white image or a white product on a white background is not the best fit, but this will stand out. So center that. Okay, cool. We're, we're ready. Now, the other thing I like to do too, consider this, cross promotion, right? Every marketer needs to cross promote other products. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, um, don't forget to decorate your t-shirt. So I can go put in a custom message in this particular area. Um, I'm just going to put in don't forget. And let's go make this larger so you can actually see it. So you can put in a custom message in here that's not gonna interfere in the design studio. File, save for web and device, and this is gonna be a large file, so yes, we wanna process this. Let it think here. And we're gonna go ahead and save this to our desktop as a 500 by 500 uh, JPEG. You don't wanna use a PNG, you wanna use a JPEG. Actually, sorry, sorry, I eat my words. You want to use a JPEG, or a PNG, you wanna have the transparent area. This always confuses me, but check this out. Let's go back to the home page here at uh, our demo site. And notice this, if we go to demo and we click on the home page here, do you see how these products showcase on the home page? So you can see these little t-shirt emblems here. And I probably have a good example of this. So see the cap and see the koozie, see how they have a gray sort of background and border to it. So you want this to be a transparent area so it doesn't display. So I made a mistake, I'm sorry, I take this back, we're gonna go back in time here. I'm actually gonna delete that white background. So I want this to have a transparency. And what I'm gonna do with this white ball is I'm gonna use maybe the magic wand tool and I'm gonna remove some of this area. So I selected the magic wand, I can now delete. And so we just have that white ball in this area. So what I'm gonna do now is go file, save for web and device. We're gonna maintain this transparent background because that's gonna showcase in the design studio. The only time you have to do this in Inksoft is with a product image and with a logo. Every other time you're gonna use a JPEG. So that's why it confused me, sorry folks. So let's let this render here and we're gonna save this out and uh, make sure this is a 500 by 500 PNG. Click save and we now have our product image. So again, this is a one-time time investment and I'm gonna put in squeeze, let's put in squeeze ball. Save this to the desktop and now we're ready to go. We're not gonna save that. So let's go back to our store here. And now let's upload a product image. We've just created it, it's here on the desktop. It's called SBPNG and you can see it. Once again, it has a transparent background and you can see how nifty that magic wand tool is to removing a background element or image. So what we're gonna do now is I can upload that file. Now notice this, there's also a batch upload. So if you have multiple products, let's say I had the same image but I had a black stress squeeze ball, red, blue, green, purple, pink. I could upload a batch folder of all of those images in one fell swoop. So if it's one product, you're gonna use this control here on the right hand side. So what I can do now is I can go and select a single image. So I'm gonna to go to choose file, go to my desktop, choose that image and go ahead and click upload. And the system is gonna go through and do the analysis and go ahead and import this file into the system. Again, this takes some time because it's creating an index. It's gonna place it in the database, so be patient. Uh, this is why that uh, batch upload tool is so convenient because you can upload all of your products in one fell swoop, walk away, come back, and that will be uploaded into the system. Now, I wanna point out that in this environment, you can also associate this product image that you're uploading to a color. So let's say that you chose, hey, there's a product that has three colors and there's different decoration areas. You can associate this upload to a color and to an imprint region that you're gonna make available. So let's see if this uh, refreshed on us. Still thinking here, almost done. All right, we're just gonna move on to the next stage. So what I'm gonna do is click next. And when we do that, when this photo finally uploads, and here we are, now in this stage, we are gonna define the imprint region. This is the last step in the process. So there's again, some notes and descriptions here. One exciting tool that we hope to release fairly soon is the ability for you to create dynamic imprint regions. So let's say this is a circular region. I want somebody to design in that circular region, anything that goes outside of that region becomes invisible. 
So it's a really cool enhancement that's gonna let you create a really unique imprintable area and then everything outside of that area will become transparent. So doing irregular shapes and colors, or excuse me, uh, products will be easy in the system. For now, we're limited to a um, effectively a square or a rectangle. So what I'm doing is I'm left mouse clicking in this area and you can see I've just defined a square and I've defined my imprint region. And you can see that that's now done on the left hand side. So what you want to do is work from the left, define the imprint region, choose the side. This is going to be a product that's going to be a front. I could name this. I could also associate this with a print width. Now if you don't already have an exacting width, what you can do is you can add a new one. So I'm going to put in on the right hand side under print widths, I'm going to add a custom print width. I'm going to put an SB for stress squeeze ball and I'm going to say this area is one inch wide. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus symbol to add that into the system. Now from the drop down, I can choose SB one inch. So Wingsoft knows the width of this area is one inch. So I can go ahead and now say that that's the default. Meaning when somebody goes to the design studio, what is the default product view and imprint area? Do you want somebody to be greeted with left chest versus full front? Do you want them to be greeted with the back, full back? It's up to you. You can make those decisions here in this setting. All right, great. I can at this next stage is I can choose next. Project regions is saved properly. Now that we've gone through all of those steps, I have the complete uh, you know, selection here. It shows me everything that's available on the workspace. Now, again, one thing you want to do is make sure that your product is active. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's uh, active. And what I can do now is save all of the changes. Everything has been done properly. And that is the process for entering a new product into the system. Now, remember, we just created a custom um, printing matrix. And you can see here where my mouse is hovering, it says print price models. Now I can click signs and assign this to a print price model. Right now it's not associated with a model uh, whatsoever. We, we told it to disassociate print pricing because this is just going to be a, uh, oops, I got to go back and select that, save those changes. That's going to be a, uh, um, a product that's just going to be four bucks. Doesn't matter how it's decorated. Alrighty folks, we have some time left for your questions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the recording and we're going to take some of your questions and uh, provide some answers hopefully.